afternoon. It's the graveyard slot after lunch, so I hope you're all awake now. Um, I'll just correct something. Cowsland. Cowsland. Sorry. We were, we were originally C O W I S in 1600 or something, so that's where it comes from. So we say Cowsland. Anybody from Woodburn or Dalkeith, which is down the road, which any Scots people will know, say Cousland, so <laughs> the company. Am I just doing um, yeah. inter um, uh, forward? Yes. Cowsland Smithy Trust was created in 1989 by a group of um, like-minded uh, local villagers when the blacksmith, who was the fourth generation of a family, retired and he decided that um, although he didn't own the building and couldn't give us that, he gave us all his tools and all, everything in the building um, to try and save it, save the, the trade of blacksmithing. The smithy had been uh, built in about 1703 um, along with a range of other buildings in the village. Um, it was an improvement that was uh, done by Oxenford Estates who owned the village, owned all the, the buildings in the village and in fact they owned everything, miles around, all the farms and they basically started a, more or less a, a model village. So they, they started a pottery, they started a windmill, um, they built new orchards in a great big um, improvements, agricultural improvements, um, what would you call it, uh, initiative. Um, we had north, south, west and old airfield farm and air is actually Gaelic for east I believe so we had north, south, east and west all in the one village um, and the village was part of the agricultural improvements um, system but very very early on. So Cowsland Smithy still stands, um, the pottery isn't there but it's been dug, the windmill is half there, it's been dug, the orchards are all still there um, Hold Him Fast is the name of a house which is another farm called Hadfast and North, South and Airfield Farms still exist West has gone The blacksmith yes as I said donated all his tools um, and it did take until 2001 for the trust to raise the money to purchase the buildings which are valued at £94,000. So <laughs> that they're still valued at £94,000. Um, so the, the very first project of the trust was to um, secure the, the blacksmith shop buildings, <coughs> get another blacksmith in, and also just tidy up the grounds generally, all that sort of thing, put the roof more or less back on. That happened with a team of village volunteers and some of the Scottish um, projects guys. Um, anybody know the name of that project? There was a big project which brought lots of people from abroad and they all came and stayed in our village hall and helped to put the roof back on this midi. Um, was it Spa? The? Spa? No, no, it was a long time, longer before that. Um, I can't remember the name of the project. I wasn't involved at that point. The, uh, we've had another project to conserve some more buildings um, and at that point we did a whole load of volunteers did a whole lot of traditional uh, courses in lime mortaring, uh, whitewashing, dry stone diking and the conservation of the tools in the smithy which were mostly rusty by this point we have 875 tools on a catalogue which is quite a lot. Um, we wanted to try and expand a couple of years ago and we came up against funding problems. I've heard that all day today. Um, but we had to start changing our plans when water started coming into the, the cottage, um, which is... The cottage is here and this 
um, building, this uh, corrugated iron building was leaning up against the edge of the cottage and the water was running down inside. It had been restored once already inside the cottage and that had caused uh, another problem. So we decided that we'd just step back a bit. We, our, a lot of our volunteers were getting quite old um, and they'd had 20 years of trying to put the building back together. So we decided to just take a deep breath and say we need to do a smaller project to restore this bit. Um, and luckily we had this, that um, corrugated iron building is uh, listed, or it was be listed by Historic Scotland. And we found, that's the, that's the after, we found by somebody coming in on a, an open day, they brought this picture from 1954 and the building's not there um, at all. It's a wooden building. And then we went back to the 1901 postcard. It's not there either. Went back to an earlier map and there's a gap between the two buildings. So we managed to convince everybody that there was no, it wasn't there and we could just take it down. Bless them, Midlothian Council said, just take it down. Historic Scotland said, just take it down. So we did it with literally the village people, the guys with the, the hats and the shorts in the summer. We were doing all the, doing all the songs. Um, ne necessity for volunteers is tea and cake. <coughs> Just keeps them all going. So we took the building down. We sold the scrap metal for £95, which was great. Um, and then we started on the inside of the building where the water had ingressed. You can see it in the corner there. This, this room had all been redone as the blacksmith's um, living room when they left in the 1960s and it, the water had started coming back in. So we took all the plaster work off, interestingly to reveal the 1700s hearth, which we thought the cottage was Victorian. Um, there is a Victorian fireplace behind that 60s fireplace but behind that is the 1700s hearth, which means the whole range of buildings was built at the same time, um, which was very useful. Um, we did everything ourselves. We did uh, plaster work, um, insulating the loft. Uh, we didn't electroproof, damp proof the cottage ourselves. We got an expert in to do that which if you haven't ever seen it, it's, um, it's a titanium wire which runs around the whole of the building and it's permanently um, attached to the electricity and it just deflects the, the damp. There's no, um, no foundations on this building, so it just deflects the damp and it's worked absolutely brilliantly. The building is absolutely dry as a bone. And then we were able to do the decoration again, all by volunteers. And we started putting in the uh, collection of the village history uh, project, which was started in 2000. We started it in 2000 thinking, ah, there's nothing much about this village. And uh, we'll have it all collected in a year and stick it somewhere in a cupboard. So 17 years later, we're looking for yet another building because people are just coming along with all this stuff but we also have traced the history of the village back to early Bronze Age um, there are bones in the National Museum so we want to get, get those Kaislanders back to, to have a look at I think. so we started tidying up the smiddy after that the smiddy building is next door to the cottage and it wasn't a bit of a mess it was um, we had a blacksmith, previous blacksmith to the current one was really not, he was a blacksmith tenant and he was a welder basically. He didn't really do a lot of traditional blacksmithing. But we still have all the tools. If um, Gal Gale would like any, <laughs> any specific tools you'd like, <laughs> you're looking for, we'll have a chat about that afterwards because I think there's, there's we've got hundreds of, we've got... 50 swages and you know we've got multiples of everything so you might might find something you need um, 
we did a little bit of tidying up in the in the smithy, and we started cataloguing the artifacts. We did. We always have a celebration. Anything we do, get it finished. That's really important with volunteers. Have a night out. Have a have a party afterwards. Um, get the local MP along. Make sure you're in the papers. Um, and again, this is the volunteers just taking on everything. We're, we're in a, a village where we've got a lot of retired people who've retired from very specific jobs. And there are project managers, structural engineers, there's all sorts of people um, who really want to get hands on with something. Uh, so they were, they're very good. If you ever want to measure anything, you call Ernest and he measures everything and marks it out for you because he was a, a surveyor. So um, there's me shoveling something at the far end. So we all get, we all get involved. Um, when we're doing a project, we really don't have any money. We have n no funding uh, unless it's a very big project and we're really working year to year on what we can um, get from visitors' donations or little bits of fundraising. So um, I get sent round all the local companies to tap them for things. Uh, we were lucky enough with the paving to have a descendant of one of the previous blacksmith families come along to an open day and she happened to run a paving company <laughs> and she said um, if you can pay for the materials I'll put my guys onto it and they will um, they'll do the, do the work. So they did the first bit of work up here to do that little patio bit which is temporary <coughs> at the moment um, until we get more money to join it all together um, and then the next bit um, Marshall's Paving came along and said we love the job you've done, spread it all over all their stuff and gave us all the materials for the next bit so um, we didn't pay for anything at all and put in a whole load of drainage along the front because the water was coming down the brae and straight through the smithy through the front door so that very important to thank your sponsors and get their name all over everything and then we had a new young blacksmith joined us. Um, we advertised for a, a blacksmith wanting to keep the, the tradition going, 300 years, you don't want to chuck it out. For the we have a connection with the um, incorporation of Hammermen of Edinburgh, who um, in 500 years ago, they were given money for a hospital and in the Cowgate in Edinburgh. And it was the person who owned the castle in Cowsland who um, endowed this hospital. So, but they didn't know that. They'd never come across this connection before. So when I came across it, I thought, well, they might be up for some putting some money into this. So I came across with the connection. And they've since sent two busloads of people from the Hammermen to see their spiritual home, which is very nice, and given us some money to get Sean off the ground, get him some, some equipment. Um, this is our, I think it's probably our 20th year on Doors Open Day. They're always really popular. People bring loads of kids standing in a row at the front, just like this. And we'd always be sure to have lots of tea, cakes, all that sort of stuff. And, and different things for people to do, because you've got families coming, you've got people who are not necessarily interested in um, somebody hammering. We were invited to be on this industrial heritage website, European industrial heritage website, when it started a couple of years ago, and I was lucky enough to be taken to the opening of it, which was the launch of it, which was in Ireland, along with a whole load of people from Northern Europe, from Finland and Iceland and everything. So that was really good. Um, so lots of them are, are our contacts. We know, we know lots of people in other countries. So... The volunteers uh, to do with the Heritage Hub, which we've put into the, into the cottage to provide another point of interest for people who are visiting, um, the history group have moved into the cottage and stored and archived, collected all sorts of things. We've got lots of archaeology because we've done a couple of archaeology projects, but never had anywhere to put them. 
and they've always ha- been in shoeboxes, you know, lots of stuff stashed in shoeboxes, our pottery, all that sort of thing. We've created a new website, um, and now we've got this extra um, extra place for people to come on open days. We have lots of family history. Uh, people come to look at up their families. Was that the? Mm, people. <laughs> I thought that was the time up here <laughs> pinging in the corner. Um, we've engaged with the local school, local primary school, and created a, a heritage trophy, um, which they came. We had so there's 70 children, I think. We had four four sessions in two days um, with kids who live in the country, but had never never been to anything like this before. Our local school in the village was closed 10 years ago, so all the children go out, out with, so we don't have any engagement with them unless they, we bring them in buses. But they loved it. They, we lads, um, that's, our, that's their, the drawing that won this year's competition. Was, that's our blacksmith with his earbuds and his hat on. It was great. The first, the first competition was photography, so they, they took a lot of fantastic photographs. The best taken by a five-year-old with little pigtails and her gym slip with an iPad whose parents were photographers. <laughs> they just, they just, I just kept standing behind her going, what are you doing? She's framing everything. And so They won the first one. But uh, I think the best thing on that day was the little lad that came and refused to leave the smithy. He, he just stood like this, watching. And he said, came out and he said, do you know... When I came here, I thought I was going to be a professional footballer, but now I'm going to be a blacksmith. <laughs> and that, that just made everybody's day. He said it was just wonderful. Um, we have people researching family history, because the village history goes way, way back. Um, and these are the, the Sked descendants, so they're descendants of the family of the three generations of blacksmith. And we had, there's a 90-year-old in that picture and a six-month-old, but we actually had... 40 people there that day and there were three invited and they brought all their cousins and the, <laughs> we were sitting in the cottage and the, the window just went dark and there were skeds coming into the cottage <laughs> and jamming in and all looking like each other which is brilliant and going you must be cousin so and so's you know mm-hmm. so it was a great day and they're still great supporters now um, and, and great connections with them uh, it uh, got another family going just recently, who arrived in the in her, heritage hub to look up their family history, and they had farms in the village from 1860, and they had just found their grandfather's papers up in the attic in a box, which were all the farm leases and all the um, diaries every single day of the farm, one of the farms in the village, all written up 1897. Um, and it, on it went. We went through this pile of stuff. Their, their grandmother was the first president of our WRI who celebrate their 100th year next year. So there were great connections with them. And they also had receipts from the Smiddy, from Kitsked, who had done stuff in their farms. And we have the ledgers in the Smiddy which match exactly. So we've got the, the bills and the, he's got the... the they've got the payment, so we now have them all together in the one building. I spent two months over the summer scanning everything. So that's, that's what goes on at Cowsland. <laughs>